it's an honor, though with deep sadness, to share some remembrances and stories about Tom Cooley. We've all lost a good friend and a good colleague in Tom Cooley. Tom meant a lot to me. He helped me with my career. He helped all of us with our careers. I've had uh, good relationships and, and very worthwhile relationships with Tom on many, many levels. Tom was a really fine human being and a really terrific economist. And I've known him for a long time, really valued him as a, as a friend and as a mentor. He was an inspiration to me throughout. We had much in common. Most significantly, we were a freshwater school. Believing that people are actually rather clever, that we ought to reflect that in our scientific work. Tom was always a very generous person. With us in Penn, he, he volunteered to, to run a, an overseeing committee of Pierre. But in addition to that, he was always very kind to me. And I think it, there was nothing special about me. It's that he had a sheer curiosity about economics and he thought every young person had a lot to contribute. He was really, I think, a fatherly figure for the economists of my generation. Uh, perhaps it was his warm smile or that uniquely uh, you know, reassuring tone of voice that he had. I'm, I'm sure you remember it. Uh, you knew that you could really trust him and always count on, on his support. I met Tom about 35 years ago. I was a first year graduate student, PhD student at the University of Rochester. Tom was a senior professor. He never treated me like a grad student, much less a first year grad student. We became friends very quickly. He always treated me as an equal and as his friend. And as our relationship evolved, Tom became my dissertation advisor. Uh, he was fantastic as an advisor. He knew when to let me go off on my own into the jungle in search. And he knew when to provide more guidance and when to tell me that I was off on the wrong track. I got to know Tom best when he was a, a professor at Penn and he and I overlapped for a couple of years. Now he's only there two years, but let me tell you some of the people that he interacted with and inspired. One was Vincenzo Quadrini, who was a student there. He and Tom got to know each other, wrote some papers, and then had a lifelong co-authoring relationship that produced a dozen or so great papers. When I first met Tom Appen, I immediately noticed the gentle and generous way he was interacting with graduate students. The first time I talked to him, I was intimidated by his enormous scholarly reputation, and I was nervous to meet him. But my anxiety was short-lived since he made me feel at easy right away. At the time, I thought, what a humble and great guy. The year after my graduation, we started working together and we had a long series of collaborative work. We published in total eight papers together, two of which in collaboration with Ramon Marimon. The last paper I published with Tom was only two years ago. Ramon was also a co-author in that paper. The second person he worked with was Leo Hanian, and they had this paper I really like, Cyclical Behavior of Prices. And the idea that prices rise and boom and fall in recessions is central to the Keynesian way of looking at the world. Another person I work with is Gary Hansen, and he was also visiting Penn. And uh, Gary and he wrote a couple of papers together. One I really like was inflation tax in a real business cycle model. To me, Tom was much more than an academic advisor and a co-author. Tom was a dear friend and also, I would say, a fatherly figure. It was Jeff Campbell that knew us both and thought we could have a good relationship that introduced us. And he was right. We had a great relationship and Tom became my advisor. I recall that at that time, uh, still fresh from Italy, I was a little uneasy with uh, professional relationship in the United States. And uh, meeting Tom was very refreshing because Tom was very direct, always with a smile, but very direct. He cared generally about me. And before I finally settled down and got married, he kept offering feedback on girlfriends in his understated kind of way, something that I really appreciated. After having several years of writing a blog with Tom, um, I haven't been able to keep up with it since Tom's passing. And the main reason is, is I, I, I start to write something and 
you know, I get it written and then I say, you know, what would Tom say about this? And then I'm wondering to myself, I'm not sure he'd like it. So, so I start over and then it's like, you know, what would Tom say? And I think when I look back on my career and how Tom helped me, I had those same feelings when I would write a paper and give it to Tom to look at. I was always, always waiting to hear what he would say. Tom was very sensible and he was a true gentleman. As good of an economist as Tom was, he was just as good or an even better person, friend, and advisor. And what made him so fantastic as a friend and as an advisor also made him a fantastic husband to his lovely wife, Patricia Bauer Cooley, and as a great dad to his four remarkable children. When I think about Tom, two things come to my mind immediately. First, he was an unconditional friend and mentor. Whenever one needed help, Tom was ready to put things aside and get back to you. Second, Tom had great wisdom. Whenever you needed advice, he had the right one. Over years, I found myself often asking, what would Tom say about this? What would he do? On top, he was lots of fun, hard to beat. We miss him. In the words of Ed Prescott, he was a scientist and a gentleman. He was the person who helped you with everything. Tom was a great scholar as a leader. He retooled himself several times. You know, those of us who went to, to school in those days, uh, Lucas and Prescott pulled the rug under all the stuff we'd been taught of before. And, and, and that's why those guys were carrying around Kolmogorov and foam in. So we had to learn to, to redo both econometrics and theory. And, uh, and uh, Tom did that early and he did it several times. Not surprisingly, Tom held strong opinions on economics and in particular on methodology. I recall that once uh, he entered my office as I was reading uh, a popular book on uh, cross-sectional growth regression in economics. And uh, he smiled and he said, what is that? And he added, don't you know that I wrote papers to show that that approach is invalid? In fact, he may have used a slightly different word to describe that. To me, what struck out with me was that he was super willing to think about both sides of a story. So whenever I had questions about something that's ha happening in economics that was a bit controversial, uh, not really mainstream yet, I wanted to ask for his opinion because it was always very thoughtful what he was, he was thinking about. He made you feel better and encouraged. Even if you couldn't, even if he couldn't solve your problem, you would feel energized to face the problem rather than giving up. He shows sincere empathy, which is quite rare. Tom was also always there if you needed help. And so that was great. He could always count on him. A funny story about him is I had a visitor over from Israel and uh, she cooked a huge meal, like a seven course dinner. And then Tom was out with the speaker, I guess the Wharton speaker, because they went somewhere fancy and he ate a whole lot. So he came back to the house around seven and she asked if he wanted any dinner. So he ate the full seven courses just to be a good guy. Tom had a meaningful and endearing smile. And as a student, I learned very quickly that he could deliver even the worst news, always with a smile and with a word of encouragement. Tom was smooth, uh, was classy, was loyal. Kind, compassionate, caring, supportive. Was incredibly humble and he was a gentleman. Open-minded curious, uh, I could go on, um, but hopefully that helps to just paint a little bit of a, of a picture of how I saw uh, Tom as a person. Tom came across easy choices and took none. Choose the ones that made a difference. The RBC book to set the standards in macrodynamic research. SED and RED to have new ideas and young careers to emerge. 
and on your stern to find and promote depth and ethics in the business world. And Tom was uh, a careful planner uh, and he had lots of energy for things that he believed in, uh, even if they weren't of great benefit to him. He was an early member of the Minnesota Economic Science Lab, which as y'all know is an important organization in science generally. Tom was a remarkable economist. He made major contributions in the areas of econometrics, including a path-breaking paper with Ed Prescott, one of the first papers Tom published on regressions with time-varying parameters. He made enormous contributions to the theory of general equilibrium business cycles, including papers with Gary Hansen, and additional econometric contributions about vector odd regressions and parameter estimation with Steve Leroy. It really goes without saying that he was a fantastic uh, macroeconomist. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, his book on uh, frontiers of business cycle research is really, I think, a milestone in, in quantitative macro. And I remember that, you know, uh, in grad school, we used to call uh, Stocky Lucas Prescott the Old Testament and the frontiers, the New Testament. <laughs> and that became kind of the go-to volume for, a, I would say, a generation of us who were working in the area. That book's become a classic in a good sense in that it inspired uh, generations of macroeconomists to learn what real business cycle research is all about. Tom uh, was a real servant to our profession and, 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 and to all of us. He was a director uh, on the board of directors at the S&P. Um, he talked to lots and lots of reporters and he was a real force in our profession. Tom liked to write papers that made a point. He also influenced policymakers. And to me, that's a real, real important thing. Something I think we've missed uh, for many of our uh, academic friends and colleagues. There's no better place for, for this sort of tribute to Tom than the annual SED meetings. As, as many of you know, Tom was, was one of the founding members of the society. Tom uh, Cooley, Tom Sargent, Ed Prescott, had a little bit of a revolution. Uh, they wanted to um, change how the Society of Economic Dynamics and Control was being run and they decided they were going to set up their own society. Uh, so they kind of wrestled it out of the hands of others and we set up the Society for Economic Dynamics. He thought up the idea, he pushed for it, he was a founder and early leader. And the whole point was to to do something that, uh, you, know, you know, Tom was a, a big uh, engine and leader in this to provide outlets for uh, really good young people who are interested in dynamics uh, to get together, talk to each other, learn from each other, push, push each other, and push us older guys, um, and then create a journal which was a, which was a good outlet. Tom also became the um, first editor of the Review of Economic Dynamics. So he was, I would say, you know, the first intellectual leader for the society. Tom was unusual in that he combined great scientific work with equally great administration. I understand he was a great dean. He's the gold standard of deans. And um, what he did was he, he, had a, he hired young, promising people. He was great at spotting them. Uh, supported them in every way. He was able to assemble an exciting group of uh, young macroeconomists in the business school uh, from whom uh, we in the econ department uh, greatly benefited. During that time he really helped the place flourish. And I think he told me at one point he hired over a hundred people over the years at, at NYU. When I moved to Stern myself I had the chance of uh, witnessing him at work as a leader. In his capacity as dean, Tom showcased his willingness to pick up fights whenever the need arose. Tom really wanted to do the right thing. He had a clear vision for Stern and reshaped the school to reflect that vision. 
it was wonderful to be there. There's lots of activity and it's under this uh, soft but guiding hand of Tom. Tom had a real way of getting the best out of people, to making you want to go to work there and work hard. His legacy is uh, is the young people who, uh, now, now he has the young people that he, uh, whose career he started, now a whole bunch of them are famous. He helped all the young people in the society. Um, he watched over us. And I think the SED um, conference more than any other conference is really a conference that, that allows young people with a passion for economics to get together. And that was just something that Tom really cared about. And he was, I think, very proud of, of his contribution to, to, to creating the SED and in particular this conference. Tom's house to say goodbye. Um, his friend and colleague, uh, great economist Steve Leroy, also came over. We were just there to say goodbye to Tom, but Tom wanted to talk about economics. And so the, the last afternoon I had with him, we talked about economics. A few of us were having drinks at Topa Topa in the funk zone of Santa Barbara. Tom was looking a bit frail, but joined Tanya and me and the others for a glass of wine and otherwise seemed to be in good spirits. Who would have thought it'd be the last time we'd see him? She was a very passionate man and, and, a, and a very uh, sweet um, human being. We will miss him dearly. So that's how I will always remember Tom, um, as a top-notch scholar, uh, an institution builder, and uh, especially a senior colleague that you could really count on. Uh, so pretty much the perfect academic. Tom made life better in the places he was and for those he trusted, but kept to himself the hard times. Tom went through some difficult times in his life, but he met those challenges with great calmness and good humor. For me, his example is something I aspire to. I miss him greatly, I mourn his passing, and I celebrate his life. So let me end with a toast to a great economist and an even better friend. It was an honor to know you, Tom. I wish I could be half the inspiration that you were. I need to toast Tom. Absolutely. Tom was someone that loved good red wine. Loved good red wine. And in his memory. In his memory to Tom. Cheers. So we'll miss Tom. He was a great, um, great figure in the profession and uh, a good influence on everybody and uh, uh, measured, measured questions, always very polite. Uh, straightforward and so on. He was uh, a lot of fun, a great economist, and as I said, a, a fine human being. So uh, I definitely miss him and um, have great memories of him. I miss Tom a lot. Uh, I know he was a big supporter of mine. He was the first person to come and um, congratulate me on becoming the president of the, uh, of the SED. And we talked about things to do and places to go. And um, I'm just sad I don't have time to do that with anymore. We are missing him dearly. Besides losing an outstanding scholar, we lost a great human being, which ultimately, it is what really matters. Now, I miss the friend and co-author. We miss a great economist, a scholar, institutional builder, a man from whom to learn. So Tom, um, I know you're looking down on us and, and hope we're doing the right by you. Thanks, we miss you, Tom. Tom, I love you and I miss you dearly.